Yeah, you can start. Today, I will continue to talk about the expectation of the algorithm. First, I will uh, talk about the detail of the uh, EP algorithm for the cluster, cluster problem. And then we talk about the relationship between BP and EP. And now we will quickly review what the cluster problem. And uh, suppose we have uh, multiple observations by samples from the mixture Gaussian distributions. It means that uh, it has a 50% probability sample from the first Gaussian uh, distribution and another 50% probability sample from the second Gaussian distribution. And we want to estimate the latent variable x. And based on the basic inference algorithm, we, we want to estimate x. We just need to calculate the posterior distribution of x. And for this problem, we can draw the fact graph and this is variable known x, and uh, this is called the prior distribution. And this is the uh, uh, likelihood distribution from the observation y. So we can uh, uh, directly calculate the posterior distribution of x, but uh, this uh, likelihood, likelihood distribution is a mixture of Gaussian distribution. So the complexity is, will increase exponentially. Last time, uh, we mentioned that the we will use the EP algorithm to approximate the likelihood, uh, a Q, likelihood QI of X uh, using the single Gaussian uh, distribution to approximate the mixture of Gaussian distribution. Uh, suppose we started the S likelihood term. So we use PI of X to represent the true likelihood. likelihood and use the q i of x represent approximate likelihood distribution. And since we started the s likelihood likelihood term, so we define uh, the product of uh, the products of all the of the products of all other uh, likelihood terms and the, the prior terms as the q naught i. So q naught i is, is just to uh, equal to the product of these three incoming messages in our uh, factor graph. And uh, we know that the EP will approximate the likelihood distribution by projecting the approximate posterior distribution and the true posterior distribution. So we use a Q of X to represent approximate posterior di distribution. And it's, it's equal to the product of all the terms in this factor graph. So with this uh, Q naught, uh, with this definition of Q naught I, we can use the moment matching to update the approximate uh, likelihood distribution Q I of X. And uh, EP will work by uh, matching the, matching the true posterior distribution and approximate posterior di distribution. And uh, this is done by minimizing the key out divergency. This is uh, this part is uh, this part is the true posterior distribution is a mixture of Gaussian. And uh, this part is uh, approximate posterior distribution. It's a single Gaussian. So by minimizing the key out divergency we can get the mean and the variance of the approximate posterior distribution. And uh, by uh, then we use the approximate of posterior, posterior distribution divide the Q naught I, we get the approximate likelihood distribution. And last time we, we did not give the detail how to get how to compute the mean and the variance of the approximate posterior distribution. Uh, Generally, to compute the mean and variance of the approximate posterior distribution, we only need to calculate the uh, derivative of the log normalization factor respect to the parameter. Here, our parameter is the mean and the variance. So we need to compute the derivative of the logarithm normalization factor respect to the mean and uh, respect to 
the variance. Why? Why? Um, because if we did the uh, derivative of the log normalization factor, we will uh, get the one over z, and uh, there's a derivative of z with respect to the mean. And uh, here, z is a normalization factor. Uh, uh, we can write uh, is equal to the true uh, true uh, true likelihood distribution and uh, Q naught I and the integral X and uh, we can take take the same inside the integral we can write the, this to I oh sorry here it should be uh, it's a P P Ti of x since we started the uh, s plus the integer and the z so we have the part the derivative to the mu and the integral over x and uh, uh, since pi of x times q naught i of x is equal to the true posterior distribution, so over the z is just normalized. So this part is corresponding to the true posterior distribution. We take the derivative of the true posterior distribution over the mean, so we can get the I will explain this later because in the later slides we will calculate uh, in detail how to compute the uh, mean and the variance. Just I mentioned that we need to calculate the derivative of the uh, logarithm normalization factor with respect to the mean and the variance. So first we need to calculate, we need to know the normalization factor uh, z is, uh, is equal to the uh, true posterior distribution and times q naught i and this integral over x. And here, since we use the Gaussian distribution to approximate the uh, likelihood distribution, the q naught i is a Gaussian distribution. We use mu uh, mu naught i to represent mean and v naught i to represent the variance. And then we will first uh, calculate the, uh, this term. But before we calculate this term, we will compute the derivative of Gaussian distribution with respect to the mean. Because we will use the result of this term in the following slides many times. Uh, for the Gaussian distribution. What is Q naught I of x? Q naught I x. Uh, uh, suppose in this spectrum graph, and uh, we want to. Because the likelihood is a mixture of Gaussian, right? The, the pi of x, the true likelihood pi of x is a mixture of Gaussian. So if we calculate the posterior, we just uh, uh, multiply the full incoming message, right? So it will be uh, complexity. The complexity will, in, will increase exponentially if we, if we have more numbers. If the num if the neighbor of the variable of x is increasing, though, so the computation complexity will increase exponentially. I think they, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's two to n terms, you know, the Sean mentioned last time. So we want to use a Gauss, single Gaussian distribution to approximate the likelihood, right? So we use a, P, a QI of x to approximate PI of x. And uh, we want to know how we get the QI of X, right? So, so it means that we only want to study this term. 
if we if we know how to calculate approximate likelihood for each term, and then this and this is similar, right? So since we studied this approximate likelihood, this term, and uh, we define the other terms is known. So this is Gaussian. This is approximate Gaussian, single Gaussian. This is probably single Gaussian. So we, we multiply these three in coming, these three terms together. So it, we define these three, the multiplication of these three terms is equal to the Q naught I. So Q naught I, uh, so actually the Q naught I is equal to the Q X, the approximation posterior distribution uh, divide the Q I of X. So we just need that the Q X <coughs> divide the Q I of X because we want to study this term. We want to study the approximate Q I of X. The, the, the formula of what is the Q I of X. We want to study this, so we just uh, use Q X divide this term. We got this uh, part, because this part we assume is known. Want to study the QI of X? You just uh, you can think about uh, this uh, this three incoming term. The Q not I is is a prior is a prior corresponding to QI of X. So you, you can see like that. Yeah, I will continue to talk about the derivative of Gaussian distribution in the to the mean and the. What did this one? Oh, this is a, this is a, yeah, yeah. Because I mentioned that uh, we want to take, we want to compute the derivative of the uh, logarithm normalization factor z i respect to the mu not i, because we compute, because in this computation we will use the derivative of Gaussian distribution respect to the mean and. Uh, we will use this result in the following slides, in the following computations many times. So I just want to discuss the discuss the result of the derivative. Yeah. I, I think it's why we define the Q not R. Uh, why define the Q not I? Just uh, I mentioned that because I want to study uh, this likelihood term. So, if because I want to study this likelihood term, QI of X, so the other terms is known for me. Because initially, actually, I, I will talk about this later. The whole class problem using the EP algorithm. Here, I can mention. Uh, I can talk about this. Uh, Right now, yeah. Because we should have the initial step, we should have the initial iteration. So we will suppose the. I just mentioned about the QI, and because other is known about yeah. If, other we, if we got the because PI of X is mixture of Gaussian, we, we don't want to use the mixture of Gaussian. We want to approximate it using single Gaussian. So QI of X. But we don't know the the the, the, the formula was the mean of the variance of the approximate uh, single Gaussian. So we want to calculate. If we calculate, if we use a method, some uh, strong set that is a KL divergence to minimize KL divergence, we just use some method, we calculate the QI of X. 
that we can use a similar method to ca calculate this and calculate this. So after we calculate all of these approximate, likely, uh, approximate likelihood terms, so we just uh, multiply them together, so we got some approximate posterior. Then we will continue the iteration to update the approximate uh, likelihood after this, and this term, after this term, update the posture, and then continue the iteration. We will get the, the final result. Until the matrix can work, so we get the final result. And uh, so if we want to start the QI of x, we need to assume that these terms are known. So it sounds like uh, as the initial step, we assume that since we don't know the likelihood, ma likelihood method, we can assume that the is uh, equal to one. So the method equal to one. So it does not uh, affect our result. So we assume that this this method equal to one. This method equal to one. This is our prior uh, probability. It's a uh, Gaussian distribution with zero mean, the one hundred uh, variance. So for this term, we want to know the we want to know the QI of x. So we use the true approximate, uh, uh, use the true likelihood, and uh, and this two and this two assumed likelihood and this prior to multiply these four terms together, we got the true posterior, dis posterior distribution, and uh, we use the and we use the single. A single Gaussian to approximate the to approximate the posterior distribution. So we just uh, using the KL divergence, minimize the KL divergence between the true posterior distribution and the approximate posterior distribution. So if we we get the approximate posterior distribution, we just divide these three terms. We already know. So we got the approximate likelihood term, QI of X. So I know, I clear. So maybe now you're still not clear. Could you please just follow me to calculate uh, how to calculate the mean and variance? Because in the later slides, I will talk about the the really, really detail about the clutch problem using the EP. Yeah, so we, so our, our work is to, first is to calculate this term, but before we calculate this term, we first calculate the divergence of the Gaussian distribution back to the mean. I just mentioned that I will use this result in the latest data computations quite many times. So uh, this conclusion is easy. This is Gaussian distribution, and uh, for the mean, it only contains the in the exponential function. So to do the derivative uh, respect to the mean, we just have the two times x minus mu and uh, over two to wait. So this part and this part is a still Gaussian is a, yeah, it's a, it's a still Gaussian distribution. So the final result is this. So it's okay. I so now I will calculate the I will calculate uh, the so for the derivative of log z we got the by over z and derivative of the z i. So here I use the simple uh, notation. Z i to represent the uh, omitted this argument. <coughs> okay? Yeah. Then for z, we have the, the form of the z, so we just plug in the z in this equation. So we have the So for this term, 
only the Gaussian distribution contains the includes the uh, mean mu not i. So uh, just to show that in the last slide, the Gaussian distribution, the derivative of Gaussian distribution returns to the mean. It, the result we have got the result. So here is a note. We just here. So here the note is a result of Gaussian distribution differ, differentiate to the mean. So we just uh, okay to plug in according to the equation to plug in the corresponding term. So in our problem x minus mean is mu not i, right? And the variance is v not i, and the Gaussian distribution times Gaussian distribution x mu not i v not i. So for this term, we can separate. Uh, uh, we can separate. Actually, we can separate this term. For the first part, this it uh, includes the variable x. So we can write as p x. Actually, we can take take the v not i outside. So z i v not i p x u not i v not i x. Right. This is for the first term, and for the second. Since the uh, uh, mu not i and v not i, it just it doesn't have relationship with x, so it's a constant. So we can take it outside. V not i, v not i. And uh, from the upper side, we know the integral p i x and the Gaussian distribution is e e equal to z. So this part, this part is canceled. The, we got this term and this constant. So let's take let us take a look what this term is a PI times Gaussian distribution is a posterior distribution, right? Posterior distribution over the normalization factor. And so X this, it's a the second one is minus mu not I over V not I. I think you. Oh, sorry, which part? Yeah, the second one. Because the you second did one. Yeah. Yeah, the second part is. Uh, yeah, it would be. Mu not. Is it mu? Yeah. Mu. Oh, okay. Mu, mu, mu. Yeah. Mu. So, so this part is uh, corresponding to the expectation x, right? And uh, we have the parameter of i from here. And the second term is, is mu, yeah. Mu not i, v not i. OK, we got this. So we rewrite this equation. We got the expectation x is equal to, we multiply the v not i at both sides. So we got the. The V not I is equal to I not I. I. So the expectation of X. It's a V, right? Right, we got this. The, it's posterior times, it's the first moment, it's a mean. So we got the mu. So by calculating the, by calculating this part, 
we got the formula of the what the what the mean of the posterior distribution. Actually, you don't even need to go. Through. So you, you're saying that the partial derivative of log uh, the the partition function mm -hmm. the open mu is the expectation of your Peter X well oscillation, right? Yeah, for the Gaussian distribution. If Actually, you, for every distribution, it's, as long as it's a full line source. Yeah, yeah. For for uh, for the Gaussian distribution, the derivative of the derivative of the log normalization factor respect to the mean, we just uh, got the mean, the, the, first, of the expectation of the mean. But for other distributions, uh, expectation of the parameters, yeah, yeah, the yeah. we got yeah. the expectations of the parameters. But just like the parameters for Gaussian is just the mean, so therefore, so yeah. therefore I asked you at the beginning why is I want to want you to just because like, it's quite easy to show, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's just if you have to, yeah. So if you take the take the log partition function, so basically the partition function is just doing that. Uh, it's the normalization function. If you have an exponential family, basically what your distribution is just is equal to exponential something like you have some oscillation. Peter i x x is your variable. There's some x that it can be continuous or whatever, and you have some parameter with respect to this. Variable as a new time. So basically, that that is the exponential distribution. New i multiplied by that. Actually, I show in the latest slide. Need that? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, I, 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 I will that, yeah. Yeah. show that the if uh, for any other distribution for the, in the exponential family, uh, q x and z is represents the approximate posterior distribution, yeah. and z is the parameter. It depends on your yeah, distribution. If you go in the C it represents mean variance. And for other distribution, base distribution it represents the shape parameter yeah, R factor. Sure. In this case it's easier you, you start from this first. Then they, they won't be asking a big question, right? Why you want to take the possibility of loss C over VO. I don't know. I'm not sure how many of you is thinking about this thing. I, I was thinking about this thing. I forgot why I'm doing that. Uh, I think and, uh, it's, it's a two step to just show that this is the expectation yeah, uh, of that. Uh, I just think that I just so give the detail yeah. about the classic problem. And I think it's just a Gaussian distribution. And then I will give the general case about other distribution in exponential families. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, right. I, I think if you know the 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 procedure of step of BEP using in the cluster problem with Gaussian distribution, you you will use the similar method for other distributions. So I put this on the later. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> it's very hard to uh, I don't know <laughs> follow after you have a question in mind. Why are you doing that? <laughs> and then I uh, at least for me, I cannot follow. I just need to stop and then why are you doing the password directive? Yeah. Yeah, the Yeah, you cannot just yeah, I mean, so I ask people to, to to believe in you for the usually it's not just a good problem. But anyway, just just yeah. You can mean I will start talking about oh, uh, I mean like for, for for those of you who still don't know why again like it's a quick quick thing. That that is the distribution. Basically you have X your distribution have this form is like the, uh, the the exponential family, and the partition function is just I need to normalize this thing into a a uh, uh, a, 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 a probability distribution. So therefore, I divide it by some of this thing here. And then it's I, yeah, some of the i, some of the x here. Right. If I have some of x, then this would be a distribution right? because I sum over x here, this would be equal to 1 here. So therefore, this is the partition function here. This is the normalization factor here. So if I take the log of this phase, I need the Maybe you can 
total of the right hand side. So we got the, so 
we take this outside. So after this part is corresponding to the expectation. Next Yeah, we have the zi for the first term, P, the integral pi of x times uh, the Gaussian distribution mm -hmm. is equal to this, so we cancel. For the first term, for, for the second term, actually the, uh, the integral pi of x times Gaussian distribution is a true positive zero distribution. And uh, z is a normalization factor. And I, I can write. So it's corresponding to the expectation of this part. Yeah, so I, I thought that PIX is just for the first one. Oh, then, yeah, I I should, maybe you should here, I, I should have uh, the bigger brain. Yeah. yeah. And the bracket for the PI. The what? For the PIX, what will you do? The end of the PIX. Yeah, end of the ZX. Yeah. Okay. Oh, here, here. And uh, this one, we want to, uh, and, uh, and for this part, we can expand it to uh, go to the expectation of x square and uh, minus, minus 2 times mu of i expectation x plus I square, right? I can expand this term to three terms, and uh, since we want we want to calculate the variance of the approximate distribution, the variance the the variance is equal to the expectation of x minus expectation x. equation we can arrange and get the that's the expectation of x square. So expectation x square is we multiply the both sides by the two two v naught i square. So we get the two v naught i square log For this term, it should be v not i. And this term, since we multiply both sides by 2 v not i square, is cancelled. So for this term, it's times 2 to v not i is equation x and the minus uh, mu not i square. Uh, here we, we need to minus For these three terms, we can so for these three terms, we can combine them and uh, minus. Yeah, we can combine them and uh, this expectation x minus. They calculated the expectation of x yeah, from from this. It mean so it's it's yeah expectation sorry expectation 
of x is equal to the So from the first uh, computation, we can get the uh, we just rearrange this equation, and the uh, expectation x uh, just equal to. I mean, you have to that. Okay, okay, here, here. So expectation is the uh, way times the uh, log z respect to the mu uh, plus the uh, yeah the uh, mu i. Divide B not I. We can plug this into this term. this term we can get the mu mu v not v not i of the derivative of what the i respect to the mu not i Posterior distribution. Posterior distribution equals to this part minus this part. Right? So here is a clear form. After we calculation, we got the yeah, we got the mean of the posterior distribution equal to this form and the variance of posterior dis pos posterior distribution, approximate posterior posterior distribution equal to uh, this term. So for the mu not i and v not i is known for us. And you, if you have a specific problem, you just need to calculate the, the this part and the this part. Then you, you will get the, the values of the mean and the variance of the approximate posterior distribution. So um, now we will uh, talk about the quadrant uh, problem with our specific uh, uh, formula. So before we talk about the our uh, flutter, flutter problem with specific uh, equation, we just show some properties of Gaussian distribution. And uh, if uh, two Gaussians multiply together, and uh, it will also result to a, a Gaussian distribution. And uh, the mean uh, here is the uh, generated uh, Gaussian distribution, the mean of the Gaussian distribution and the, the variance, the, this is the mean of the Gaussian distribution and the variance of the Gaussian distribution. If the Gaussian distribution divide another Gaussian distribution, it will also produce another Gaussian, Gaussian distribution with the variance and the mean. So with this property of Gaussian distribution, we now we will calculate our Clutcher problem with specific uh, uh, equations. So in our problem, the uh, post, the true posterior distribution in this equation, right, is a mixture of Gaussian distribution, and the Q naught i is a Gaussian distribution uh, with a mean uh, mu naught i variance v naught i, and uh, use the properties of Gaussian distribution. I just mentioned it last slide. Uh, two Gaussian uh, multiplied together is also a Gaussian, and uh, this the multiply together it is still a Gaussian and uh, here we have the integral over x. So the so the Gaussian the Gaussian part it will be equal to one. The here the left part is uh, corresponding to is corresponding to this term. So do you need I to compute the detail? Uh, I, if you don't need I just uh, Go with the in the following here. So similar for this Gaussian multiply together and with integral upside over x, so we get this. 
So for the cloud problem I just mentioned, we need to, to calculate the derivative of log, uh, logarithm zi respect to the mean and respect to variance. For the derivative log z respect to the mean, so with the previous calculation, here I just uh, show the result because it's easy to calculate. So for the, the derivative of z respect to the mean, in our problem, only the first half, the Gaussian distribution, have the, have the parameter uh, mu naught i. The second term does not have uh, the mu naught i. So for the derivative respect to mean, mu naught i is equal to zero. So here, the Gaussian distribution respect to derivative Gaussian distribution respect to the mean, we already computed. It has the the result has the form uh, in the node. So we just uh, call in this uh, result to yeah. The second equation, why the, the left side and the right side they fall together? You mean this? No, no, no. The second one. No, no, no. The second. No. Yeah. You mean the second? You mean the second? One? Yeah. Why is it called the left side? Why equal to left side? Mm -hmm. Because we. The, the derivative of log z respect to mu the first uh, huh? mu 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 not i I don't know why I didn't get the question. Yeah, I mean why why uh, is the derivative of because the derivative of log z respect to some parameters of the big alpha or something. We first take the derivative of z. So log, the derivative of log z with to z is uh, 1 over z. Then we uh, take the derivative of z respect to the parameters. So I think mu is not parameter. I think you still have typo there. Well, Actually, mu is parameter. The, the, you, earlier, you have theta of mu x. And then I said that mu is parameter. You said no, mu is not parameter. No, no, no. And that, and that side actually, actually this slide is very strong. And that that side slide is made by me. And the, that side is u, u, u x is represent yeah, a yeah. function. And here is a mu. So yeah. in that slide you have u is theta, right? And then I and mu, u is a function. And theta is mu right? in that slide. Peter is actually new here. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. what I'm saying. <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. What yeah. was the problem? No, that's no problem. That's what I'm saying. Maybe it's confused. Yeah. 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 And the right side, the Z has the, the mu not i and v not i again. Okay? You mean? Yeah, yeah. The yeah. left side. You mean the argument? Yeah, the argument here is there. Bias observation, so mu and v is the variable of the Gaussian distribution. So here is z. Here is z. Yeah. We take the integral over x. We got to this term. So x is no is no longer a variable of z. So z is a function. Mu and V. Yeah, it, yeah, I think that already has the mu and V. Yeah, yeah. so we take the derivative. Yeah, log z is back to mu. This term contains the mu on i, and uh, the derivative of Gaussian distribution is back to the mu. Yeah, yeah. and here, so we just uh, Calling this equation to write the result by by incorporating the corresponding term. Yeah. So here is the uh, y minus mu not i over the variance. Yeah, we call the variance is v not i plus one. So we got this. And here we use r to represent uh, the three terms together. Just for short, because the other computations 
we still use R2 here. So here we got the result to compute this uh, derived rule. And the and the line and the line we will calculate the derivative of velocity respect to the variance. So similar we got this and uh, for our z only the first term contains the variance and the second term uh, the derivative equal to zero. So here for Gaussian distribution the derivative of Gaussian distribution with respect to the variance, we already calculated the result here. So according to this equation, we just plug in some corresponding uh, corresponding terms. So we get the result. And in this result, the R we have we have defined it in the last slide. So after we calculate this, we just uh, uh, we just uh, plug our plug our uh, our calculations in these two equations, so we get the mean and the variance of the posterior distribution. So now I will give a summary about the closure problem using the EP, and since we use the Gaussian distribution to approximate the likelihood distribution, and uh, and the prior distribution is a still Gaussian distribution, the, appro the approximate posterior distribution is Gaussian distribution. And we also know that the property is a Gaussian distribution. Gaussian times Gaussian is still Gaussian, and the Gaussian divided Gaussian is still Gaussian. So EP will not, we will just uh, pass in the parameters of the Gaussian distribution. Because if we, we know the parameters of Gaussian distribution, we will know the, the, the Gaussian distribution, right? So here the parameters include the mean, variance, and the normalization factor as uh, for the initialized side we initialize the term approximation to i of x. Since we don't know the information about the approximate likelihood the distribution to i of x, so we just uh, initialize it with these parameters because with these parameters, the normalization is one, is potential is uh, x minus mu square over two v i. So the mu is equal to zero, and the, the variance is equal to infinity. So this part is equal to one. So the, the initial method is sent from the So the, the initial message is sent from the, the likelihood term is just equal to one. And uh, for the initial prior distribution, we just assume that it's a Gaussian distribution. This is the normalization fa factor, and this is the variance. This is the mean. So we just uh, define it as very big. It's a very big. It has the 100. The variance just means that it's not a strong uh, Assumption. Then we will set the approximate posterior, uh, initial approximate posterior Q of x is equal to the prior distribution Q there of x. So it has the same parameters with the prior distribution. So with this initialized uh, uh, parameters, we want to uh, approximate the likelihood term QI of X QI of X so just like the last presentation we will use the, the EP algorithm to approximate the likelihood term by uh, by by matching the by matching the true posterior distribution and the approximate posterior distribution so the for the EP algorithm, first we will uh, we will use approximate distribution divide the likelihood distribution because this likelihood distribution we want to approximate. We divide this uh, likelihood distribution to call the Q naught i. But uh, the only thing we need to do is just consider the 
parameters of the posterior distribution and the parameters of the likelihood distribution to i of x. And uh, based on the properties of Gaussian distribution, Gaussian divided Gauss is still Gaussian. So from the, so based on the, this, uh, the properties of Gaussian distribution, we just can find the district par parameters of the Q naught i. And uh, then we will, uh, we will do the uh, uh, moment matching projection to match the approximate posterior and the true uh, posterior distribution. And to, to get the mean and the variance and normalization factors of the posterior distribution. And for the new mean and the variance, we already show that how to calculate. So we just to need to calculate the derivative of what they are respect to the mean and respect to the variance. So this step corresponding to we got the approximate uh, approx approximate posterior distribution. Excuse me. What does the projection function do? What's the projection function? It just uh, minimize the KL divergence. And then we will like the update approximate uh, posterior distribution divide the Q naught I, we will get the approximate likelihood distribution. So here we, we, we also can find the mean and the variance by considering these parameters and these parameters from this posterior distribution and the Q naught I. So finally we like this um, we we like the uh, the mean and variance of the approximate posterior distribution equal to these returns because we want to iterate uh, iterate this this dice until the approximate terms can work. We will do the iterations yeah until the approximation term Q I of X can work. Then finally we got the approximate posterior distribution. So then this is the, the EP application for the clutter for the So yeah. for the prior of the parameter, so so we choose like one one hundred? Yeah, one hundred. So can we also choose the like Infinity, like just like the other case, these terms choose the the variance as infinity. Can we choose the infinity for the no? No, because because for the because for the prior distribution, we just uh, we, we just want to. If you choose infinity, then the the q now the i will uh, the, the variance of q now the i will be equal to infinity also. So if they they won't convert, they will iterate you uh, update forever. If you want to make the algorithm stable, so you can choose very large value, but you, you cannot choose infinity since it, since infinity minus infinity is still infinity. Yeah. So you get nothing, right? Because you want to calculate Q naught i, right? Q naught i equal to the next line.
exactly why you think it should be divided by finite value rate. Because you or not divide by your values, like you have that prior is infinity but you, you have whatever that from the other observation is like a finite uh, variance and maybe you subtract that you derive your Gaussian and the the variance of the new Gaussian is kind of shrink by whatever you subtract by the Yes. So it's just minus one. Right? Or like the, the, by the, the return to this. Oh, sorry. You see here? If it's uh, your prior is infinity, then they return to this value. There's no prior, then how can you know which distribution you should match? If but you but have that one is not prior. Okay, you set the middle. Yeah, I, 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 I know what you mean, but that one is uh, not infinity over infinity, it's infinity over, or the infinity minus a finite number, right? Why, why uh, actually, it's the van variance. The, the Gaussian multiplication for variance is uh, van over variance equal to van over v1 minus van over But, but you, so you mean that both of them is infinite? But I think it's a, you, you have the bias very big, and then the other one, the observation is not infinite, right? Each time you observe your divisions, it's kind of like finite, right? I'm just thinking, just thinking why you say that infinite minus infinite, or like infinite divided by infinite, but not infinite divided by a finite number, or like infinite divided something by a finite number. Because it seems to me it's like you, you each observation have a finite Gaussian, fi finite variance, and each additional variance can help you to shrink your variance by that, approximately by that variance. So therefore, if you start with your prior is infinite, then you will never be able to shrink. Yeah. No matter how many steps you do. Thank you. 
which is to, yeah, for the down track, which represents the derivative of the theta. And uh, for this part, only back to the expectation of function u of x. And uh, since another constraint equation is the equation 2, so we take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to theta. And the right side is equal to zero. The left side, uh, actually, the calculation is not is, is, is not equal. We also can guess the the, the equation equation four. So based on the equation three and four, we can get the care divergence for the distribution exponential family is corresponding to the expectation of exponential expectation of sufficient statistic. So for different uh, distributions, you have the different sufficient statistics. In our, uh, we just talk about the quadrature problem, the Gaussian distribution. So the sufficient statistics for Gaussian distribution is just the mean and the variance. So in our quadrature problem, always find the mean, the variance, and uh, of the Cartesian distributions. And then when we talk about the relationship between the BP and EP, actually BP is the special case of the EP. And the uh, EP will provide the input approximation when the when for the model BP is intractable, it is untractable. Uh, we will firstly review uh, the BP algorithm. The BP is an efficient infer inference algorithm to compute the local micro probabilities over variables. BP works by um, passing messages between the variable node and the factor node. Actually, in, at, in each iteration, the BP algorithm may go three parts. So, uh, suppose we have this graph. Uh, BP, the variable node will send messages to all his neighboring factor node in parallel, and then the factor node will send messages to all his neighboring uh, variable nodes in parallel. And then the leaf of this variable, leaf of variable node will compute, com compute it, will be updated. Mm. And for the message sent from, suppose we started the variable node xi and the uh, uh, fact node xa, the message sent from the variable node xi to the Back node F A is just equal to the product of these three messages. So for equation, it's just equal to the uh, product of all the incoming messages except this one. Uh, for the message sent from the factor node to the variable node, is is equal to the product of these incoming messages. Excuse me. Yeah. X J. Yeah, X J. Uh, X J. Uh, here I, I think it's not helpful. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. here is that. It should it should be X J. Yeah. Uh, it means that uh, the product of the incoming messages, except the one from the verbal node X I. And then this this product of the messages will times the factor function and uh, will sum over all the arguments of the factor function F A. So this is a message sent from factor node to the variable node. For the computation of the belief of the variable node, it's just equal to the product of all the incoming messages. Um, so in our problem, we want to compute the belief of the variable node. And to compute the update the belief of variable node, we can take another viewpoint. And uh, uh, generally, we just uh, mentioned that the, the belief, the verification algorithm is uh, variable node pass the message to all his neighbors, and then fact node pass message to all his neighbors, and then 
after receiving all the after receiving all the incoming messages, the Varbano, the belief of Varbano will be computed. Computed. Uh, another viewpoint is uh, if the Varbano receive a message from one such node, the belief of the Varbano will be updated. So from this viewpoint, we can rewrite the belief of the of the verb node in this formula. Uh, in this paragraph, suppose we started the verb node x i, if it received a new method from fact node as a, we will update the belief. So in the belief, we will have the message as a sent to the x i, and uh, the other three incoming messages, we can write it as a message sent from verb node xi to the fact node fa according to the verb node update rule in BP in the last slide here. And here we add a normalization factor. See? So, now, according to this formula, we can we can think that this method sent from the fact node to the verb node x i is like the likelihood method, and this method sent from the verb node to the fact node is like a prior but prior method, and the belief of the Verb node will corresponding to the posterior posterior distribution of verb node x i. So by taking this viewpoint, we can uh, assume that if the message sent from the fact node f a to the verb node x i has a complex form such as the mixture of Gaussian distributions, then the direct Computation of the belief of variable xi will be uh, uh, untractable, and the computation complexity will be uh, uh, will be right in uh, exponentially. So the EP algorithm will work like that. We will not direct send message from the fact node f a to the xi. We will send the approximate method from F A to the X I. So by using this approximate method, the belief of the verb node X I will equal to the product of all the approximate method. Here, the belief of verb node X I is corresponding to the Q X of I. Q x of i is uh, uh, we talk about in the larger problem for the approximate uh, posterior di distribution. So now our problem is how to compute the approximate method sent from the fact node to the verb node before we uh, before we calculate we just define some partial belief. Uh, we denote B not F A of X I is is equal to the product of all the incoming approximately except the one from the fact node F A. So actually it can it equal to the belief of the verb node X I equal uh, divide the approximately sense from the fact node F A. And another partial belief is the uh, B not X I of F A. And here we define that the belief of fact node is uh, the product of the all the incoming messages. So the B not X I is just the belief divides the message sent from the verb node X I. So with this two definition, yeah, we will show that we will show that the 
approximate massive extend from the fact node to the warp node xi equal to this equation. Here we use the EP. The EP is just to matching the true belief and the true uh, the true belief and the approximate belief. So this part is the massive sum from fact node S A to the warp node X I and this part is this three becoming massive. So actually this this term is the true belief and uh, by using the KR divergence, KR divergence, we got the approximate belief. We, we got the approximate belief B of XI. Then the approximate belief divide the divide the this ring incoming method. So we of the approximate massive extent from the fact node as A. And then now the belief of warp node XI is equal to this ray incoming massive and the approximate the incoming massive from the fact node as A. So from this point of view, we extend the BP algorithm to the EP algorithm, and uh, actually the three different, uh, the three equation, uh, equations in standard EP algorithm is almost the same exact, uh, exact this equation. So here we need the projection, we need to do the minimized KL divergence. Suppose if the massive sent from this fact node to this bar bar node does not have the complex form, is uh, does not. Uh, it's not the mixture of Gaussian. So we don't need this projection, right? Because here is a Gaussian, and here is Gaussian. Gaussian times Gaussian is through Gaussian. So we don't need to this, we don't need this projection. So without this projection, this term and this term can be canceled. So now we come back to the standard BP algorithm. So from this point of view, we show that BP is the special case of the